uh, study, a new report from, uh, from the Royal Society called COVID-19, examining the effectiveness of non-pharmaceutical interventions, had, uh, has done a big review of evidence gathered during the pandemic uh, for six different groups of what's called non-pharmaceutical interventions. So things like lockdowns, things like social distancing, things like masks. And they have concluded that they did have an effect unequivocally in reducing the spread of infections. Well, let's talk about this with Carl Hennigan. He's the Professor of Evidence-Based Medicine at the University of Oxford. Carl, um, you had a chance to look at this report. Um, did they unequivocally show that they reduced the spread of infections? Yeah, there's a mismatch between the conclusion and the spin and what the actual report says. So let's look at MAST. In the MAST, they had three RTs, CTs, randomised control trials, and then they introduced 32 observational studies. 91% were at critical risk of bias. Effects were uncertain. Travel restrictions against Wuhan were insufficient to stop the exploitation of the virus. Little evidence travel restrictions after for the new variants made a difference. And also test and trace one randomised trial all at serious risk of bias, unable to draw firm conclusions. So there's a mismatch between what the spin is and what's actually in the report. But here's something I do agree with in the report, Julia, which I think you will agree. Here's the statement. MPIs, which you said non-pharmaceutical interventions, can impose a great number of costs and burdens in terms of social and economic impacts and indeed of increasing ill health. I'd agree with that. Yeah. But this piece of work isn't going to consider any of that. That's yeah. the crucial issue here. It's not if you lock down harder and faster, you'll end up with a response like China. What is the consequences of this action? Mm -hmm. And this report does nothing to deal with that. So the idea you can come out with this is a slam dunk is a misnomer and incredibly unhelpful. But what's happening here, Julia, there's a group of people that are coalescing, I feel, behind the Jeremy Hunt approach, which is to lock down harder and faster. If we'd, only, if we'd done it sooner, if we'd done it more seriously, then, then, then we... Then then we, everything would be fine. And this is a ridiculous thing, because we saw what happened in China, and as soon as you come out of lockdown, you can lock down forever. We can all live in little pods and wear our masks and uh, never leave our homes, and, and then somehow life's going to continue, But and then no one will ever get any diseases. But we saw, didn't we, even with children with babies, I mean, I've seen it in, in my own nephews, you know, that the, the isolation they had in those early months, those early years, meant they didn't get a lot of the childhood you know, infections that you just get genuinely, and you're absolutely fine, but then, you know, your body develops that immunity. I know so many people who are sort of permanently ill with colds and goodness knows what because they just lost a lot of that natural immunity the impact on education the impact excess deaths now all those people who didn't go to hospital didn't see a doctor and just the the, the mental health impacts institute fiscal studies extraordinary result five out uh, well, one in five of um, every 16 year old girl in this country right now has has sought nhs mental health care in the last year i mean that's terrifying. That is terrifying. This is off the scale. But but why don't they consider this stuff? Because this was stuff that people were talking about way back in March 2020 and in the first lockdown, in April 2020, May 2020, people were raising all of the 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 you know the the you know, unintended consequences, but predictable and predicted consequences of a lot of these measures, even down to masks. Why 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 are the people doing these studies? Why do they not take these into account? Yeah. So you're right. You're right. This idea, if you stay at home, you can reduce a plethora of risk. You won't have a road traffic accident. Don't play in sports. You won't break your leg. All of these things, you'll reduce your risk of having a respiratory infection. Just wait till schools go back. What we'll see is the rise in rhinovirus and then the panic will start to come for yeah. this winter. But you're right, I'm really worried about science and what's happening in academia. Because what's happening now is it's going the wrong way around. I have a belief, I have an ideology, I have policies. My job now is to retrofit the evidence to what I believe. And I don't care about whether it's the best available evidence. I'm just going to find any evidence that suits my belief system. And then I'm going to keep pushing that and pushing that. The problem now is there's a lot of people who were welded to certain interventions that need to keep pushing them. Yeah. And actually, they're not being critical anymore. And in doing so, I actually think they're doing a disservice to science. And they need to really stand back and say, look, these are the uncertainties. And within the report, it says, basically, next time we need to develop protocols off the shelf to do randomised control trials in a pandemic. You can't make it up in the middle. You can't just pull a protocol. But by the way, wait a second, if they've proven that these all these um, interventions yeah. worked, why do they need to do trials? I yeah. thought they just told us they worked. 
Yeah, it's a contradiction in terms, isn't it? It's a slam dunk over here. Oh, but, but next time we need to develop all of these protocols. Yeah. We need to get ready for trials. And I'm aware in Norway of people who try to do trials in schools. It's actually quite difficult because mm. you have to consent every child yeah. to the trial. So you have to be research ready. We've yeah. done it for drug and vaccines. We could do it for NPR. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Carl Hennigan always actually looking at the evidence for what people claim. Don't look at what people, or who says it. Don't look at what they claim. Look at the evidence. It's old fashioned. It used to be what we called science. Uh, 9.19 is the time. Up next, more on GCSE results. This is Talk Breakfast.